we are going to talk about MVP. Now, it's a very well used term. I would say it's almost on the verge of getting abused a lot, where people say MVP, but a lot of definition of MVP is out there. But nobody talks about how do you actually go build an MVP? Like, what is the thought process around building an MVP, right? So I thought I will actually show you how I have envisioned MVPs in Microsoft or not I, how Microsoft envisions MVP. So a lot of this will be talk, a lot of this will be an actual demo of showing you how we have built MVP products. It could be a small MVP feature. It could be uh, an entire product, which is an MVP. So that's my core um, essence of this meeting. I will also talk about a lot of times in an interview, you will get to hear that. All right. So what's your MVP? How do you address that question without thinking too much? All right. So from an interview perspective, from an actual product development perspective, I'll be capturing both. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. So let's talk about MVP and I have the picture of Iron Man. There must be a reason why I have it. The reason I have it is because um, we should <laughs> understand what MVP is the Iron Man style. Okay. Anybody here who has not seen Iron Man or is not aware of Iron Man series, this is the time for you to speak. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that you all know what Iron Man is. Okay, I waited for three seconds. I didn't hear a no. I'm assuming you know Iron Man and I'm going to proceed. All right. So for those who have seen Iron Man, if you remember, Iron Man one movie was came out in 2008, nearly 14 years back. It's been quite a while. Now, if you remember right from 2008, right till Endgame was released, Iron Man went through various variations of the suits that he wore. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the variations of the suits and how he was able to identify an MVP for that suit. Okay. I'm going to put you in that situation for a moment. Imagine you are that millionaire, the billionaire, and you've been kidnapped. All right. In 2008, Iron Man movie that came out, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was kidnapped and he was with the um, terrorists in their den, etc. And he was being asked to make a missile. Now, at that moment, he envisioned building a product. That product was a Mark I suit. The Mark I suit that helped him come out of those caves, the dungeons, etc. I want you to look at every single suit that he built from three different perspectives. Okay. The three perspectives are one, the time that he took to wear the suit, two, look at the kind of ammunition that was there in the suit and three the location of the suit all right these are the three constraints i want you to look at and i'm going to talk about those three constraints right if you remember the mark one suit that iron man wore in the, wore in the movie iron man in the year 2008 look at all the three aspects all right the suit was not repeatable which means he could wear it once there was no provision for him to take it off and wear it again. So if wearability was a feature, Iron Man's spec would write that I should be able to wear this suit once and not even twice. Right? If location were to be considered as a feature, with location means where can you wear the suit? It was completely constrained. His spec would write, I should be able to wear this suit in this cave and that's it. Nowhere else. The, it's un, unbelievably constrained, right? I can only wear it in the cave. Not only that, if I have to wear it, I need the scaffolding. I even need the help of this doctor who will die <laughs> while I'm wearing the suit because wearing the suit itself takes me three minutes. And if you remember, doctor went and tried to attack the militants and the militants killed him all this while while Iron Man was still wearing the suit, right? So if you see, there was zero repeatability in the suit. There was a location constraint. Only can wear it in the cave and only once. And I've already told that the time to wear the suit was so high that this doctor almost died. Not almost died. He died making Iron Man wear the suit. How is this for an MVP? Now, think from an MVP perspective, right? What is the objective that Iron Man has? His objective is very clear. I should be able to, rather he had two objectives. 
I and the doctor should be able to come out of this cave safely, soundly and alive. And I should be able to completely annihilate the, uh, the ammunition that the terrorists have. I'm not even going towards ammunition for a moment. I can if you want to. But if you see, right, this is a core concept of an MVP. With these two objectives that I need to be alive and I need to completely annihilate their, um, their uh, ammunitions. The features which talk about repeatability of suit, location and the time to wear are very, very, very suboptimal. The features are really poor if you see. If you go forward a few minutes into the movie and if you remember in the same movie in 2008 only, Iron Man was trying to wear this suit inside his garage. Now if you see, look at the way he is approaching the features, right? The only thing he solved, the only thing he solved was repeatability of the suit so that he can test. There was still a location constraint. He can only wear it in his garage. Is the time high? I actually saw the movie. This suit took 180 seconds. And in order for, to give this talk, I saw those clippings once again. This suit took nearly 120 seconds, two minutes, right? Severely location constraint. He was not even bothered about solving this problem. He needed an assistant there, a doctor. He needed an assistant here, Jarvis. So he didn't solve the other problems. He just solved repeatability. And if you see closely, right, the only reason why he solved repeatability is because he had to test repeatably. I'll wear the suit. I'll try to fly. Oh, it didn't fly. Fix it. Wear the suit. Do something else. Fix it. Wear the suit. Try the ammunition. Fix it. Wear the suit. So repeatability is the only thing he needs. Does he need location constraint? Absolutely not. So you see how even incrementally when he is progressing, right, he is very minimal in his approach towards building this suit. Come two years later, Iron Man 2 comes, and if you remember this guy, the only thing that Iron Man solves in addition to what he was trying to solve, if you remember here, I was saying he has already solved the problem of repeatability. He can wear this suit again and again. The time to wear the suit was 120 seconds. But the biggest problem was location constraint. The biggest problem with location constraint is he has to be pre-aware of an incident that will require him to wear the suit. That's a big issue with him wearing the suit, right? What if he is in a moment and an issue comes and he needs the suit? In which case this suit is completely rendered useless. He can still die. Therefore, how did he solve the problem? Now, this is the beauty of Marvel, actually. Just think, huh? imagine if I give you this problem and I say, hey, you know what, this suit, uh, great that you've built a suit, but guess what, there's a big problem. Now that people are aware that you have this suit, you step out, people will kill you. Then what will you do? You need a suit that you can carry with you. Where will you carry the suit? The first thought that comes is I will carry it in a briefcase. And that is exactly what Iron Man did in this movie. If you remember, he was on this racing track. Pepper Potts came, threw a bag at him. He wore the suit um, uh, from the bag. What did he do? Repeatability had already solved. He reduced the location constraint but did not eliminate it. He reduced it by virtue of the suit being portable. Still, there is a big issue that somebody has to still carry the suit. Somebody has to have the vision that, oh, there is an issue going to happen. Therefore, I have to carry a briefcase. And so beautifully put, right, when he is right, driving his car, he is not going to carry the suitcase. So you see how incrementally when he is fixing these problems, he is still very minimalistic in the approach of solving these problems. Did he reduce the time? Yes, but not much. His time to wear the suit was still around 60 seconds. And if you see, until this movie, right, Marvel takes a lot of pride in showing you how Iron Man wears the suit. Rather, every time they will do it. Because they are investing in that feature incrementally, still being very minimalistic. They didn't bring nanobots and those AI, etc. right now, in 2010, even though that technology existed. Because they were trying to build various capabilities of a suit incrementally in a very minimalistic fashion. Okay, 2010 gone, 2013 starts. This was the movie in which Iron Man, like if you remember, Iron Man's um, house was attacked by missiles. Now when it was attacked, Pepper Potts was on the receiving end, she was about to die, etc. 
But now see what he has solved. He had already solved the problem of repeatability, but there is a big issue in the in the suitcase based based suit wearing, right? He needs to be aware where to carry the suitcase, and he needs to physically carry. I am in the middle of an issue. If I am in the middle of the issue, how do I wear the suit? Therefore, what did he invest in? He invested in gesture based control to reduce the location constraint, and of course, the time is further reduced to wear the suit but think of it carefully he has reduced the location constraint to the effect that the suit is in a central location using gestures the suit will come and be worn around a person's body and he can control where it goes one very important incremental feature that he brought was that all this while until 2013 somebody has to wear the suit in totality like you have to literally like be inside the robot and you stay in that position until the robot puts the suit on you right like in this movie here also you can't be half with the suit like you have to wear the whole suit from the suitcase for you to be any effective here he solved another very important problem that there was a partial element to the suit you can just have the hand gloves you can just have the mask maybe you just have the power suit or just chest gear and the suit is still functional so he was able to modularize the suit while reducing this location constraint right now see the beauty right again very incremental very minimal and we know how this suit is going to progress in the movies now you're going back in the past and looking at this product and seeing how this product has evolved right again from just the aspect of wearing the suit come forward 2018 you see all these issues he eliminated in 2018 there was a still the time to wear the suit actually increased between this movie and that movie the reason is because the suit became modular and the the time increased significantly and i'll tell you where the suit is in a central location if you are far away from the suit and you do a gesture control suit will take a lot of time to travel to you therefore the time was variable if you are close to the suit you will get it in 10 seconds if you are far away from the suit the suit will take time to travel right therefore the time taken to wear the suit was a variable location constraint was reduced significantly but look at this movie 2018 uh this was the end game movie right in the end game he reduced the time to wear the suit significantly right this is when he used the nanoparticles right is the suit repeatable of course yes it was totally repeatable was the location constraint minimized i think so location constraint was practically minimized but not eliminated still if you remember the way he wore the suit was using two things he had to tap and then he had to pull the strings of his jacket so that the jacket can go in and the suit can take over what if somebody attacks his hands first then he can't tap big problem right then he has to maybe baby think of a gesture not a gesture control maybe a mind controlled suit that could be the next but of course we know iron man is not there anymore but now you see a button press to suit up nanoparticle the suit is me i am part of the suit is repeatable location constraint is practically gone time is reduced significantly but still the nanoparticles take time to be worn what is somebody by that time attacks my neck so you see there are still gaps that they have left so that they can continue to invest right therefore now of course i have taken just some of the suits i didn't take everything if you go back to my first slide and i said just look at the time to wear the suit the location and the repeatability the objective of every single movie was achieved by the suit that they developed in that movie in this movie he just had to survive in 2008 and he did so in this movie he was trying to test the product or in this shot he was trying to test the product therefore only location in this movie he had to basically reduce the location constraint did so and didn't do it by building a product that was absolutely unbelievable and could have solved the problem of having to tap as part of your body and there were other suits huh? like before tapping he made a suit in his ring there were other and there was a um, uh, i think so there were other suits that he built there was a suit that was on the satellite that was a hulk buster so on so forth right there were other such suits that were built but if you see 
depending on the problem in that movie that they were trying to solve the suit was able to do that for custom build for that purpose very very minimalistically he didn't overdo things okay so what did we learn from this if you see the first movie is a great testimony to how we should go build products we should build measure and then learn build measure learn is a concept which you will hear a lot in product development basically the concept is that you build something you measure what you have done and then you learn from it and if you see in the entire iron man series when you were looking at his suits he was classically doing that he would build he would measure it using jarvis and you have seen it in various movies where he said that okay now let's test how far we can go in the sky oh i learned something that i can't go further up in the sky therefore i need ice shields etc etc he was always building measuring and learning now until here is mostly what you will hear in almost all mvp product based presentations or talks people will only talk about build measure learn i am going to step deeper now my step deeper is what exactly do you mean by build measure learn i am going to take a pause here because now i am going to get into actual products enough of iron man enough of marvel a pause here if there are any questions i am more than happy to answer no questions please continue all right so let's continue okay so this was all gyan huh? this was all nice presentation <laughs> now let me get into actually how do you go build a product okay now when i say build measure learn it's so interesting huh? i i wrote this build measure learn and i was teaching my son day before yesterday and then i realized oh my god when he is doing his experiments he actually does build measure learn and this was the this is what we were doing huh so this is what i told him first that don't think of an experiment as let's ship it and then see what happens a lot of product managers and entrepreneurs get into this habit of oh let's release it now nah? we'll release it release the product and then we'll see how customers use it that's not an experiment that's foolishness okay so <laughs> whenever you hear this kind of statement that hey let's ship it and then let's see how customers react to it that is one person who didn't understand the concept of build measure learn that person understood the concept of maybe shipping minimalistically but minimalistic shipping is not done without having an experimental thought process so i will take you back to grade 3 for a moment and we will do a grade 3 experiment so that you are accustomed to that oh by the way we learned all of this when we were back in school and that grade 3 knowledge i am trying to put in products while i am building in microsoft okay so let's understand that experimental mindset which by the way i learned from my son so this is what we did huh we had a hypothesis the hypothesis was lemons conduct electricity this is a grade 3 experiment what did we do we took whatever five lemons this is exactly how our experiment looks like we took five lemons we had we inserted a zinc and a copper one of them was an anode one of them was a cathode and then we connected them in series there was no battery oh sorry i said connected to a battery there is no battery once i have connected them to a series i connected to a volt meter like or a multimeter as you see the blue i meant volt meter i wrote battery and then what did i do i measured okay and we measured with every single lemon that we introduced for those of you who are not aware if you connect lemons in series and put a zinc and a copper the lemon behaves like a battery i was able to get almost 1 volt of voltage when we connected eight lemons okay which was great all right so our hypothesis was validated that lemons actually conduct electricity what are the four things that you see on this slide which are very important we had a hypothesis after the hypothesis we built something after we built we measured something and therefore we learned something that i did not add here is after lemons we tried to do it using potatoes it didn't work so we also learned that when potatoes are used to conduct electricity potatoes do not conduct electricity therefore hypothesis invalidated everybody clear with this grade 3 science experiments if you were attentive and not absent in grade 3 you will be able to make great products in your future life 
okay or in your current life so let me talk about how this science experiment from a grade 3 student maps back to our product this is how a product looks like you have a hypothesis you build you measure you learn i am going to show you an actual product that i built using this same thought process okay so let me show you the product first and i think so for those who are aware i have shown this capability to you earlier as well so let me show you wait okay yeah so if you remember we built this youtube ecosystem in one of our uh, talks so i'm opening the same youtube ecosystem and i will go to this boards and if you remember i showed you the backlog for the youtube ecosystem as well and i'll go back to board sorry so those who have not attended, maybe you should go attend this talk. This was a talk on technical understanding of how to build products, where we built the YouTube ecosystem. By the way, this product that you're seeing is Azure DevOps. And I was one of the product managers on this product. And I had a hypothesis. My hypothesis was, at that time, when I was in Azure DevOps, and I will show you actually, when you click on this search, right, nothing used to happen. Search bar used to expand and you can type what you want to search. My hypothesis, there were two hypotheses that I had. I said, oh, if I show recent work items, up to five recent work items, then I will reduce the requirement for users to cross navigate. Imagine without these recent work items, right? People, I had seen people who used to type out their work items in OneNote, in Excel, and they used to copy paste to search. Or I just created a work item and I have to go find it. I still had to use search, a relatively heavy product to just look for work items that I really needed. And interestingly, when you're working on products, I found that the need for you to go look for your previous work item was very high. That was one hypothesis. Second hypothesis was I was trying to experiment how can I use search for navigation needs, which basically means if you see here, right, I'll do a VAC, I'll get rid of this Google thing. And I can say VAC and uh, whatever, VAC board. And it will start showing me my recent boards and I can start searching boards. Okay. So let's say if I say, I don't know, uh, health. And I press enter. Okay. Something is broken. Great. <laughs> Something is actually broken, but that's all right. The point is, my hypothesis was, can I start using my search bar as a navigation paradigm? where I'm not only going to recent work items, but recent of anything. So if you see here, right, I can go to my recent backlog, boards, prints, work items, wiki page, etc., etc. I can go find my recent wiki pages as well. Earlier, before we implemented this, right, the capability looks something like this, and I will show you. Because we didn't do it everywhere. So it looked like this. I click on search, it just expands, and it used to give me this. Oh, you can do an ext colon, file colon, path colon, proj colon, repo colon. I looked at the data and I said, Are, ye koi bhi kar hai. nobody's clicking and not our operator, nobody's even clicking here. This was a product before we did recent. Okay. Now, hai. now this is a hunch. How do I validate this hunch? I just have a hunch. Okay. I don't know. I was the search PM at that time. I had no idea whether people will use it or not. I had numbers with me. I knew how many people are searching. I knew how many people had the need to find recent items. But is search the right area? Will people ever use this feature, not use this feature, etc., etc.? All those were doubts, huh? hunch. So see what I did. I will actually show you my actual work item from four years back, maybe even longer. It's actually, it's a very, very old work item, huh? almost six years back. This is what I wrote. I said, I have a hypothesis. My hypothesis is that if we enable capabilities, blah, 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 in instant search users, then users will get accustomed to commands in search and recency in search. And we expect almost 60% adoption. I had removed certain things uh, before I could show you. I had hypothesis around NPS that how my NPS will increase. It was a metric and I said my NPS will increase from X to Y. I can't show the, those numbers to you. Here also I have removed some numbers. I had a hypothesis around the actual user, the number of users who will use it. Okay, I have removed those lines, at least for this presentation, but I'm telling you, my intent is, hypothesis is not just, I write my hunch. I write my hunch along with numbers. I 
before i went ahead i said this is exactly how much i am going to achieve and if you see here right i have wanted to do more i i wanted to do my recent sprints i wanted to make it like a command bar where you can enter commands etc etc i had a roll out strategy so my hypothesis is well established how did i even arrive at that hypothesis this was my uh, research then what am i supposed to build i am going to build this product so build ho gaya what am i going to measure i had queries written down up front saying this is how i want to measure i can show you the query but i can't show you some personal information right i had queries written down that how will i measure if you see at that time i said only 51 users have used a parallel capability 51 one thing i can tell you is that this product is used by millions of users may million not billion millions of users and there were only 51 users who i felt would be potential users if the number is 51 nobody is going to use it the number that i was proposing was in millions that if i do this millions of users are going to do that and my nps will reduce we wrote this after writing this there were other things i did and i will show those to you and then when we ship this feature by the way i wrote this on a thursday my dev team coded it by next week's friday so we took 6 days to code it as a hack and by the following thursday there were millions of users using this feature in 4 days millions of users therefore hypothesis validated rather my original hypothesis of only 60% users will use it was wrong actually 70% of the users who were using this product started using this navigation and by started using this navigation i'm not saying just click on the search bar no after clicking on the search bar they were actually navigating down using keyboard keys and clicking on one of these items therefore i knew actually that they are using it okay this is how build measure learn happens okay before even i ship this you know what i did i did this i built this ux and i tweeted about it and in my tweet i even included my product director why because he had a lot of followers not that he wanted some approval from him and actually i took and if you see this feature was released in 2019 3 years back huh? this was my mvp mvp was the previous screen that i showed you what's my hypothesis how i'm going to measure it what are my targets etc etc once i have figured out that right then i went and broadcasted to my audience saying guys if i build something like this would you like it okay you can see there were only four retweets and 16 likes these four retweets resulted in around 1200 likes if you're getting 1000 likes for a feature a minuscule feature in a very niche product and you know that those 1000 likes are coming from some of your very strong adopters of the product i knew before and that this product will work this feature will work and that's exactly what happened those 1000 likes translated into millions of users using this feature okay did i invest in this feature on day 0 to make it an absolutely awesome technical architecture to go solve this problem absolutely not if i tell you the way we ship this feature you will laugh at me you know what we did as soon as you sir as soon as you typed a work item we took that work item put it in a in your cookies <laughs> we put it in your cookies and then we kept replenishing your cookies with the last five items that's it and guess what if you tried it on edge you will not get the same experience in chrome if you will not show you your recent work items in chrome that's how buggy this feature was when we shipped it on that friday evening that's how my team was able to develop this feature in 4 days we did such a poor hack my goodness with those cookies we were able to get a million users then we took our time took happily 3 weeks and build the product in a nice production ready way okay but in those first 4 days when engineering ship we were like one corner one shortcut after the other and that itself was great validation now this feature is very popular rather people wouldn't be able to do some of their work without such such simple and easy feature right 
does your mvp should only look like a screenshot maybe not here is another mvp that i shipped and i will show you what this mvp looks like huh? i actually wrote a video i made a video and i put this video on youtube saying guys this is how i'm envisioning my product tell me if this looks good at that time i was owning the actual home page of this product a lot of people who use azure devops would not even know that this home page ever existed because we never shipped it. no we shipped it but then we took it out this is an example of a failed mvp okay i put this video and i said oh in this video i'll just play it and you'll see oh the the project is getting created i was trying to show you the day zero experience how you go build a product you click on create product and i land you on this screen where you can do so much right see how busy this screen is that you can clone a uh, repo and then you can import a repo and you can do gazillion things i was very proud of this star button and they we will do star and all none of this is functional code by the way huh? all of these are screenshots these are uh, like hand drawn wireframes of the product <coughs> that i'm showing as an actual product none of them worked okay it's just figma files and i said oh you can do this you can do that therefore you will even find some ux glitches and for those who were keen to see you would have seen in the very previous screen the initialize button was not right so many things like i i did so many things oh you can add users you can do this you can do that etc etc so anyways i shipped this feature we got very good response ha huh? we shipped this feature and guess what it bombed people hated it because it was so busy like imagine this is your day zero experience oh ma ba pre you are asking me so many things like thousand things you are asking me to do like you see it took me two minutes to even narrate what my feature is you see this video it's almost two minutes long and this came back to us in the product feedback okay we our hypothesis was that a hey, people will love it we are simplifying etc etc and we tweeted people loved it but guess what when we shipped we didn't ship all of this we shipped only the first screen people hated the first screen we removed it total engineering loss was around 6 days of working effort okay and now if you go see this product we, the current team has made it so much better and i will tell you the feedback we got right they said boss when you create a new project you are taking me to a whole new screen you are making me do so many things i just told you all of this feature right this feedback right now see how we learned from this and we changed it in actual product this is actual product i will click you remember when i clicked on new project a whole new screen appeared all of this went away one learning don't move the user's mouse click new project we introduce a panel the second feedback we received i'll go back to that video look how busy this screen is collection name project name description version control work item process pura form bharwa diya humne unnecessary iconography which was absolutely irrelevant like people thought they have to do something like we saw people clicking on these icons thinking something is going to happen i was very proud of these icons and they were wow i put the entire products value chain in these icons people were confused they kept clicking it see how simple it is this is what we ended up shipping only project name description this visibility came later this was not there and all other things are under advanced we don't show it to users at all you create a demo project demo 1 2 3 4 put the description click on create now if you remember here i showed you creating navigating all these things were changing i click on create we change that your new project is being created right now and by the way this is changed now it takes time to create a project and see now what the screen is this is what you get board repos pipeline test plan artifact what do whatever you want to do we kept it simple and if you remember in the previous screen what i showed you this is what you get so much work for you to do imagine and i was by the way i was very proud of it at that moment it felt or re solved a great problem i have given you two examples one example of hypothesis worked very well used by millions of users one example of hypothesis completely busted people hated my uh, my vision and therefore we made something so simple that people love today right i'm going to take another pause i would love to ask uh, answer your question before i move to the second stage which is by the way very important now all of this is known knowledge i am not sharing anything new with you 
in product management parlance all of this is no but then still why do products fail why are failures realized so late why do product managers get stuck with failing products for so 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 long what's the reason behind it these are my next few questions but before that i am taking a pause if there are any questions more than happy to answer uh hi sandeep anirban so uh one question uh so generally uh when you kind of uh, let's say uh think about new experiment or kind of introduce one so in that case uh, do you show something for the feature adaptation so that like for, for example how people would discover that new search experience is there in that mvp yeah. will include that oh yes 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 absolutely even in this feature right you won't believe just to make that feature discoverable right now see search mein problem nahi hai because once you are searching right you will always click on this now this is a discoverability comes in search huh if i am showing you a drop down inside search one very very important thing for you is i can't make this heavy i can't make the drop down come in one second because as soon as you start typing i lost you right i lost you like this can't come after some time it has to come instantaneously because as soon as i type all of this is gone now i'm getting something totally different right no so yes discoverability is important we introduce shortcuts i think so yeah so wack is a shortcut if you see right i'm not my mouse is here we introduce wack as a shortcut so that you can see i think so we introduce other shortcuts i don't even remember now i don't know question mark or something yeah question mark was this but yes discoverability adoption you need to think the product end to end and if you remember in all my mock interviews i have been telling start with customer persona and immediately after customer persona think of the users end to end journey from this features perspective i still have to think the users end to end journey the end to end journey is oh i am on any page in azure devops how do i even start how do i search what's my search uh, why should i search if i search is there a need to navigate how do i discover etc etc so all of those things are still applicable here no thanks uh, actually i was asking like in the mvp portion do you need to or generally do you uh, think about the adaptation kind of things as uh, because i was thinking like without adaptation maybe people would not discover that mvp is also been released or they would not know so i was just interested to know that portion like whether that comes under that mvp or not i understood see it depends on what you want to learn build measure learn what is important is what do you wish to learn if you want to wish to learn about whether this feature will be viral and adoption is a need then adoption is key there are times when we fit when we ship features and adoption is not important what we are validating is the way people work around this feature like is that even a big problem have we really solved a big problem so it it really depends at times adoption is the learning at times usability is the learning at times discoverability is the learning at times all of these are learning but the intent is the what the more important thing is when you are building these products mvps experiments you need to be very 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 clear as to what is what you want to learn and i'll tell you what i wanted to learn in this whole thing the reason i even thought about shipping this feature i am sharing something very personal huh? now at that time when i shipped this feature the nps that net promoter score of our product was very poor okay and when i went through every single feedback item of our product in the last 30 days i still remember there were more than 1500 qualitative feedbacks 1500 out of those 1500 nearly 40% of the feedback was with respect to navigation in the product 40% of the feedback was with respect to navigation and as i like, seriously i own search i am the only horizontal capability in the whole product because search will be there no matter which page you go to i can solve navigation navigation was never my charter navigation was somebody else's charter but i thought oh i can solve it i can improve nps my only focus was to improve nps my focus was not that did i create a kick ass feature that 5 million people will use if 5 million people use and my nps is still poor i have failed so my 
final goal was to see an improvement in NPS which happened. So you need to be very clear what, what is the metric you want to move, what do you want to learn. Did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one last question. Oh, sorry, I think somebody else wants to ask. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask later uh, after everyone's question. Sorry. 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 Yeah, uh, oh, uh, one question is like out of the million people who are using the DevOps every day, how did you come out of the number 51 users were using the feature? No, no, 51 users were not using this feature. There was, I'll show you, there was a particular widget, okay, which was equivalent to the feature I was shipping. So I'll show that to you. I said there are 51 users who are using sprint end countdown widget. There was a particular widget that these guys were using. And something again that you don't see in my, um, in this feature, which I have removed is, I went to around 30 of these 51 users because I, it was a widget which allows you to put your recently uh, accessed work items. Okay. So they were, they had created a widget. They were trying to access the recently work items. And I was like, oh my God, you have to write code to access your recent work items. That's my job. I interviewed around 20 to 25 of those guys, or I don't remember the actual count. And when I showed this to them, they were like, Sandeep, please do it for us. Like we want to get rid of this code that we have written in order to solve this problem. So I said those 51 users could be good proxy for me to learn from before I put any engineering dollars. See, because engineering dollars are expensive. So I reached out to those 51 guys and tried to figure out whether they like this capability, would they use it? If those 51 use, right? Because even when you build products, right, there will be somebody who's willing to go that extra mile to solve that problem for themselves. These were those 51 users, your early adopters who would pay you <laughs> to go build this feature. So when I talked to them, they were like, spot on, I want this. When you're doing a startup, you need to identify those early adopters, those 51 users who are like, please, Shripad, I please invite me for your weekly meetings when you are going to solve this problem because I think so you are doing something earth shattering. There has to be somebody who has to agree with you in that sense because those are your early adopters. They are the ones who will give you a very unbiased feedback saying chalega ya nahi chalega. So these 51 users were my early adopters. When I showed it to them, they gave me a thumbs up and after they gave me a thumbs up, I tweeted about it where I got more than whatever, 1200 likes. Thanks Andeep. Sandeep, I have a follow-up query you're at. So yes. you said 51 you interviewed and then you put it on tw uh, Twitter. Um, so how do you arrive at 60% adoption? Is it more like a target you want to achieve or was it was that based on this tweet plus 51 people and then you got to 60%? Great question. Huh? So this is where I, maybe I need to take a separate talk on data. Okay, tell me directly. How good are you with understanding your customer's telemetry? And I'll tell you what I did. It's amazing. We had hundreds of millions of searches happening every month. Hundreds of millions of searches happening. Huh? Hundreds of millions. I wrote some very complex queries to figure out what was the time when the user created a work item and when did the user search for that work item? If the time interval between the two was less than 60 seconds, they were a potential user of this feature. You get it? And it was a very complex query. And I came up with, oh, I don't remember the number, but let's fictitiously say there were 3 million users who, as soon as they created a work item, had a need to search it subsequently. And 3 million users translating to 30 million such queries. Those are the, like, I was getting numbers in millions. I had to rub my eyes to see, hey, sahi likha hai query. I went to one of my data experts saying, did I write the query right? Because this number is too high. Like, why haven't we done it? Why didn't, wo tha na? why did anybody else not see this data? How am I the first one to see this data? Because it's so obvious. And he said, no, this is looking right. Go ahead. And that is how I came, uh, by the way, that number came to around, whatever that number was, around 40% of search usage. So I said if 40% of people are going through the pain of using search to find their recent items and I had already observed people using Excel sheets and one notes to copy paste their recent work items, then I said 40 to 60 to banta. That was a hunch. So I said 40 to pakta With 40 only my leadership was happy. 
I said 60. I got 70. That's what happened. I got a question, Sandeep. Yes, President. So, all of this hard work that you put in and this minor innovation that you made, I hope that translated into some kind of um, uh, appreciation from Microsoft or the batch peer group or and that that went into your you know appraisal and did that happen or because I'm, I'm not asking uh, a friendly question I'm asking you on an intellectual level I want to really know um, I hope everything went in that direction <laughs> see had that not happened now I wouldn't have been here talking about this capability <laughs> But great, I'm happy. See, what I'm trying to tell you, right, that this is not something out of the blue. This is something, this is the life of a product manager. This is what you do. This is your job profile. I, this, all this that I'm showing, right, was three years back. I, I was a senior PM at that time. I was looking at, I was owning, I remember I told you I was owning search and wiki at that time, two features in my previous talk. When I was just owning search, I was just looking at search capabilities and I was an SPM, right? Uh, now the same thing I need to apply for bigger products, right? So I'm taking the learnings from then and sharing with you what happened three years back. But yeah, uh, don't think of this as, oh, something extraordinary. Every single PM in Microsoft is doing it. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm also trying to articulate that. We, we need to be tinkerers. We need to go around, you know, rehashing tools. You know, as we walk by, we need to repair, tinker, soften, improve everything, like on our path, all the yes. way. Yes, okay. and the more you expand, you are, you remember I, all, all my interviews, I say, go broad, then go deep, right? I always say, in all interviews, I say, please go broad and then go deep. This is exactly what you do in product management. Fixing the NPS was not my problem. Navigation was not my charter. I was supposed to own search. I'm supposed to make search awesome. Navigation was never a search charter. But as a product manager, you go broad. You go look at whatever uh, the 1500 qualitative feedback items that I got an NPS and then look at those and try to decipher those. Did I have to do it? I could have filtered there and say search related NPS. I could have done that, right? But that's what I mean by going broad. Go broad. Don't Get, and I all I always say it, don't get fixated with your feature. You are a product manager. You're not a feature manager. Look at your product holistically. Worst are the products where organization boundaries start showing up in the product. Okay? And that's why go broad. Look at the entire product in totality because you never know where your inspiration will come from. By the way, I would have done this 10 times, out of which two times something clicked. Right? But you need to be aware, you need to know, you should be, uh, you should understand the DNA of your product and customer at all times. That's the point. Okay. The talk is not over, huh? I have more to present. <laughs> okay. So let's move forward. My question is, why do products still fail? All of this is not new knowledge. Known hai. I'll tell you why products fail, right? Let's go forward. This is the product. This is the problem. Problem is perfection. Problem is my product is my baby. Problem is I'm just too excited about my technology. At times I'm just too excited about my problem. The fourth problem is scenario completion. I will go through all four. Guys, this is probably, I have already told you the tools and techniques. Now is the look at the mirror moment because I have seen so many startups where CPOs and CEOs get so muddled up with these four issues. Therefore, think of it as a reflection exercise. Put these four bullet points down somewhere so that you keep saying, I am not striving for perfection on day zero. My product is not my baby. I am not blinded by technology so that I don't look at my scenario completion properly. I'm telling you this happens. Let me tell you how. Perfection is the biggest enemy to learning fast and failing faster. Biggest enemy. Why? Imagine if in that feature where I had to show recent searches, I would go argue with my engineering manager, cookie, how can you put it in a cookie? 
what is my user searches on chrome and he will not see in edge he will see what is this we can't do this i am striving perfection and what if the feature failed i would have invested instead of one week three weeks of effort lost cost and that is cost as a startup that's a lot of money three weeks of engineering effort don't strive for perfection on day zero once you have validated your hypothesis you understood then try to reduce go to your technical debt solve the biggest p1 and p2 problems that you want to solve don't strive for perfection on day zero it doesn't work what is the impact of perfection this is the impact of perfection you know what this is anybody this is the cost of perfection the cost of perfection is this is an apple stand that costs i don't know ten thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars i'm forgetting it's a pro stand from apple oh by the way with costs around eleven thousand dollars the same price in which you can get an apple pro it didn't say was this product perfect absolutely perfect did the customers want it absolutely not didn't work striving for perfection making sure that the bevel edges are perfect oh beautiful look at this magnet amazing didn't sell strive for perfection didn't work right that is the problem when you strive for perfection just validate whether people will be willing to spend this much money on a stand one lakh rupees ka stand hai yaar ye okay second problem my product is my baby i think so this is number one problem a lot of ceos and cpos and product managers feel i have put so much effort in building it and bringing it here i can't how can i get rid of this they they put those what do you call the horse blinders i just want to see in the direction which i want to see even if signals are coming other ways they start treating their product like their baby it doesn't work like that at times you need to learn what is not going your way as well don't get biased by the amount of effort and the passion that you bring towards building your product don't be biased bring passion but don't become biased because of that passion otherwise you'll end up being products like these kodak just couldn't figure out what happened blockbuster didn't know right under their nose netflix took away by the way even when netflix was built i don't know how many of you are aware netflix also built netflix as an experiment they felt that is happening they never got rid of their actual uh, uh, cd stores netflix got rid of them way later rather they had a two pricing model because they didn't know whether their hypothesis is right now we see other by a blockbuster useless cds what netflix netflix never did it overnight right so you go slow but don't put your blinkers on don't start thinking kodak i am a, a leader in this space therefore i shall do what i have been doing for the last gazillion years no startups do that i have seen i have mentored ceos who are like oh my god sandeep i was treating my product like my baby a lot of people do that despite doing experiments because you are doing experiments only in the space that you feel passionate about in that case even your experiments hypothesis based validation mvp nothing will work you get it because you are you blinded third problem you are just too excited about technology you are like oh i must technology amazing i will go do something whenever you hear something guys yaar ai mein kuch karna hai guys meta is hot yaar meta mein kuch karna hai metaverse mein kuch karna hai <laughs> that, that, that's the conversation started on the wrong note <laughs> people don't want ai and metaverse people want the problem solved yeah you want to use technology to do so please do so technology is an enabler technology is not where you start the conversations okay knowing technology and i am saying it i have taken three sessions on technology still i am saying technology you shouldn't feel that i have to build products because i need to justify your technology or if blockchain aa gaya blockchain mein kuch karna hai yaar because funding mil raha hai blockchain projects are getting great funding from vcs it doesn't work that way vcs is fun because you have able to solve a problem somewhere using blockchain as a technology but blockchain comes in the second part of the paragraph not it's not that oh i am a blockchain expert therefore i am no it doesn't work like that where remember foldable phones are amazing we have figured out how to fold a phone we will go build products after products on it chahiye kya <laughs> do you need it anybody here feels the 
entire passion to go buy a one lakh rupees foldable phone. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm sure none of you bought it, right? No one needs. Technology is amazing, but what to do with it? And then you are again trying to experiment in that space. Do you think Samsung didn't know that, oh, I have to do MVP? Of course they knew. Do you think this foldable phone was not validated by some 51 users, the early adopters? Absolutely. They would have loved it. Oh, foldable, amazing. They would have said it. But this is the moment when you're blinded by your technology. You have your blinkers on. Last problem. You would have seen this diagram so many times. I could not complete this presentation without this diagram. MVP must complete a scenario. If for those who have seen this diagram for the first time, I will tell you what this is. MVP is not that you're trying to ship a car, therefore you ship a wheel, then the second wheel, then the body, then maybe the steering wheel, then the stepney, and then the car comes. No, your scenario is not completed. Your scenario is go from point A to point B. Therefore, skateboard, scooter, cycle, bike, car, this is where your scenario is completing. Okay. At least the person is always able to travel from point A to point B. Look at Iron Man. Was he able to wear the suit? Yes. Was he able to wear it in some time? Yes. Was he able to wear it in a location? Yes. Scenario was always complete. He didn't say, oh, suit to my pehen lunga, udunga baad mein. He didn't say that. I will fly someday later. No. Every single suit flew. Every single suit, suit he was able to wear. Every single suit had artillery. Every single suit was able to complete the scenario. Some were better, some were not good. Which is okay. That's the progression. And it, it's not necessary that a scenario is solved in the most elegant manner. And this is where I take a dig at myself. Nokia phone. Great UI. Great hardware. I trust me, it was one of the best UI and hardware at that moment at the price that was given. But guess what? Scenario is not completed. Microsoft never had the ecosystem. Nokia never had the ecosystem. These great products will fail if you have not completed the scenario. The phone, kya karunga, smartphone ka, if all thing I have to do is make phone calls and browse. Where are my apps? Developers felt I've already invested so much in Android and uh, iPhone. Nobody came. Our scenario was incomplete. Phone failed. Nobody wanted it. Scenario was not complete. But do you think I am giving you Gyan? Do you think Microsoft would not have done MVP? Microsoft would not have validated? Absolutely. Do you think we didn't have developers to go build apps? Absolutely. But we didn't think of the end-to-end -end scenario. Did the scenario make sense? Did we have enough developers to go build the ecosystem that we wanted? Scenario needs to be completed. Okay. Now I'll come to how do you solve the question of build MVP in an interview, in a product management interview. Let's say you are in a product management interview and you are giving, if you remember, the structure was very simple. Identify, ask probing questions, make sure you understood the problem, um, uh, identify the persona, identify the persona's journey. I, uh, once you have the problem, map that problem to the solution. When you start narrating the solution, this is how I want you to write the solution in your notes. Solution one, cost high, value high. Solution two, cost medium, value low. Solution three, cost low, value high. As soon as you have done it, look for capabilities where you feel that value is high, cost is low or medium. Value is high, cost is low or medium that's your mvp don't start picking items where value is high and cost is super high while you are doing that also make sure that your scenario is completed in your interview now imagine i don't know whether your product management interviewer will ever ask you to build an mvp they may not right but even when you're narrating your solution, it's absolutely all right for you to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to build this solution. And the good thing is that I can experiment quickly. The cost of this solution doesn't look very high. And I think so the value is medium. That's it. You can say it. The guy will not ask you questions on MVP because you know he knows that you have your mind sorted. You know costing and value. Great. There are other ways to find uh, your cost and value. This is the simplest. Therefore, I'm giving it to you as a hack. 
do it and then as soon as the question comes on mvp you don't have to think all over again the answer is right in front of you in your notes does that make sense does that make sense yes no maybe yeah yes yeah okay i am done <laughs> this is all that i had i have homework for you and that homework is whoever is building their own product apps envisioning try to figure out that mvp how do you figure out that mvp figure out what you want to build figure out what you want to measure figure out what you want to learn do this right now and figure out what your mvp story can look like from this if you have multiple solutions start doing the costing versus value analysis and make sure that your scenario is completed right for those who are not building a product and you are looking at some interviews we have done two interviews uh, two public interviews in in our um, uh, talks in our workshops one was kind of building food for microsoft the other one was search in amazon and there are several others that are there on the channel look at it and start seeing how you can build mvp for those solutions do the same thing build measure learn you will not do build measure learn in an interview but when you are building products you need to do build measure learn in an interview if you do a cost value analysis that is sufficient those who are attempting interviews please start doing this please start doing this very very important okay that will also train your brain how to think for an mvp when you become a product manager very important so i've actually shown you how i have built my mvp features this was a very small feature that i did i used the same constructs to build fully fledged features there are some features that are in progress therefore i can't talk about those and trust me when i'm building those features this is how i have built up there is scenario 1 scenario 2 scenario 3 all these three scenarios are mvp scenarios these three scenarios need to come together to complete the end to end journey this is a kick ass scenario unbelievably amazing this scenario is absolutely pardon my language but this is what it is bad this solution is worse but guess what i still ship the product because i gave customers work around for this work around for this this is such a kickstart scenario that customers are still coming because i completed the scenario i didn't leave them hanging in here i didn't say oh i have given you the wheel go figure out how you travel that's not the case i have given them how they can move from scenario 1 to scenario 2 to scenario 3 and complete their end to end workflow uh, something that is not existing in the market one scenario is so amazing that this itself has sufficient value for people to swear by my product okay earlier i was working on a small feature now i'm working on an entire product suite and that product suite i'm doing exactly the same thing does that make sense so it's a rinse and repeat you do the same thing once you do your homework you know exactly what you need to do go to this link for those who are already on our whatsapp channel please stay there send me your homework i would love to review it and validate it if you are attempting an interview please forcefully start doing your mvp analysis while you are writing the interview and i will see you shortly with a blog and this video on medium youtube and linkedin